Hey, everybody, it's Chris Avey and Jenny Grouse of the Avey Grouse Band. And we're out of Iowa right here in the Quad Cities. But, Chris. Yes. You know where I'm from originally. Iowa. No. Wisconsin! And we're so excited that we're here jamming on humagoo.com with Tom Garrett's The Best Blues Music in Very Happy Packerland. Go Pack! <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Happy Thursday, April 9th. Hey, it's somebody's birthday, I think, huh? Hi, Jenny. Thanks for coming on the show. Hey. How you doing, Tom? Oh. I can't believe I'm on your show today. I know. It just happened so so quick. And I, I thank you for Betsy Brown and your, your great CD, Devil May Care. And uh, I just downloaded the blues trying to get my karma going again. And you guys are in the top ten of the Billboard charts. Isn't that ridiculously crazy? Who ever thought that would happen? <laughs> oh, I love it. The little old band. I say little old band, but Iowa. You're from Iowa. I'm a cheesehead. Thank you for that great ID. 
Uh, again, uh, Jenny Groves is here from the Avery Groves Band in Iowa. Yeah. You guys are rocking. Tell me about your band and all the good stuff. Thank you so much. Yeah, Avery Groves Band is um, uh, eight, Chris Avery. So that's yeah. where the AV comes from, and Jenny Grouse, that's me. And so we uh, we met at a blues jam some years ago, and uh, along with our drummer Brian West. And I just honestly, I I bugged them for a long time. <laughs> I bugged them to to try doing a show with me because we really hit it off um, on stage at the blues jam. So Chris AV and I did some acoustic shows together for uh, the remainder of that year. And then eventually we decided to pull the band together. And, uh, yeah, we, we kind of officially became a band on New Year's Day of 2017. Um, after we did a show on New Year's night, uh, or New Year's Eve, I guess it was 2016, and we were called the Chris Aby Band with special guest Jenny Grouse. So oh, the next day we decided <laughs> it was a new band. Yeah. I love your name because you got the slash, every slash Grouse. You know. I know, and it's kind of funny. We've had to take it out now because oh. so uh, not now for the this will help for all of you trying to find our music. <laughs> we uh, we do have two um, places to ha- like re- like ways to buy our album, and if you go on Apple or iTunes or any of those, if you're not listening to Humagoo and mm-hmm. you're trying to get it in your car, um, it, it's confusing because there is AV slash Grouse, and that has our EP that we did two years ago called The Road to Memphis. Uh-huh. And that is a, a fine album. Um, nothing wrong with that. Um, but w- if you're looking for the new album, The Devil May Care, you have to look for A.V. Grouse with no slash. It is confusing, I know. <laughs> Soon it'll be just normal. They'll no slash, no slash, A.V. Grouse. Yeah, no way. slash. <laughs> I know. It's just some reason that the, it confuses the metadata. And so we it, decided it, that it was easier to take the slash out then. It does. It does, not just on my end, but that slash in any kind of our world that doesn't like it. In Word and all that, they want the little dash, not the little slash. So anyway. Yeah, you know, it's confusing, though, because, like, A.V. Grouse, I think a lot of people think my name is A.V., and so they will call me A.V., which is very nice. But we really are a, a two-person-headed team, kind of like, you know, Tedeschi Trucks or something like that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's two people, and Chris A.V. and his vocals and his amazing guitar work – um, are really as important um, to make sure that people know are a part of what's going on. And his you still there? Did I it's not A.V., it's oh, Jenny, right. but if you call me A.V., I'm sure I'll answer. Oh, very cool. Hey, you know, you really kicked it off in 2017, then you won the Blues Challenge. Now, every state's yeah. got a challenge, and then you all go to Memphis for the big international challenge. You won the 2017, I believe, 2019, yeah. and the semifinals so, in 18. <laughs> yeah, actually, 18 and 2020. Um, we actually, we, we uh, the year that we became the band in 2017, I guess I can only say this about me, is I'm a tenacious person, and I told the guys that I really love the idea of this blues challenge, and they had all done it before with different bands. Yeah. In fact, Chris Avey and Brian West, our drummer and, and lead guy, along with uh, Chris Avey's brother, were in a group called the Avey Brothers, and they actually went to the finals and took third place back in the early, earlier 2000s um, at the International Blues Challenge. So I told them I wanted to do it. They didn't really want to, but I convinced them. And in 2017, we won the Iowa Blues Challenge and then went to Memphis in 2018, where we were the semifinalists um, at the International Blues Challenge. And we did the same thing again in 2019 in Iowa and in in just this last January in Memphis. So it's been kind of a whirlwind, but, you know, those competitions, they're a tricky thing. As anybody knows, music competitions kind of stink as a whole because it's people judging you on something that's very subjective. Um, But the cool part about the Blues Challenge is the people you meet, the new fans you make, the other musicians that you draw inspiration from, mm-hmm. and the industry people that you connect with while you're a part of it. So that's why we do it, and, and that's why we love it. Oh, it's a great thing, and myself, too, on the show, through Betsy Brown and Blind Raccoon, I've got to talk to so many cool people. Bridget Purdy, yeah. D. Miller, Mark Cameron, those are the Minnesota... Mark! Group. Yeah! <laughs> 
He's been on my show, you know, so I've learned about this. Everybody, it's like almost a relay race of bands. You have so much time to set up and go. So you're judged on it a is, different type. It's coming like the, the pit stop in so many ways. It is like a pit stop. How quickly can you take off the wheels and put new ones back on? That's the <laughs> that's what right. we do. Yeah, it's so true. And Mark Cameron, yeah, definitely a shout out to their band in Minnesota. We have become um, pretty close to a lot of the musicians in Minnesota and in Iowa, for some reason, those two blues networks have really connected. I have yet to connect more with the Wisconsin folks, although I hope to. You know, I'm originally from Wisconsin. Until I was 13 I years old, yeah. I was raised in radio in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. My dad's a radio guy since 1966. Oh, so um, I'm a big fan of, uh, he was with Wax and Way, a big country station up there. And uh, I've, I've always been a uh, a big fan of my home state, Wisconsin. Go Packers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I think that's Channel 13 because I live in La Crosse. And we yes. got a couple. Yes. Oh, my God. I live so in La Crosse. So my dad used to do the MDA telethons for Channel 13. <laughs> and wow. when I was a kid, we used to, um, my dad actually wrote the Menards jingle. How's that for weird? <sighs> Well, yeah, Menard. Yeah. That's it. Eau Claire, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So he was buddies with uh, with uh, with John uh, John Menard and uh, oh my and 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 his now ex wife Paula and uh, and and yeah. When I was a baby, that's we used to hang out with them. And he asked my dad, who was a, a jockey, a disc jockey at the time, to come up with some words, do a jingle, and that's how it came out. So every time we hear that, we laugh because I'm pretty sure my dad got paid. About a hundred bucks in a case of linies. <laughs> <laughs> that was his big payday. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, we're talking like in the seventies, I believe, right? Oh yeah, in the seventies for sure. Um, yeah, for sure, absolutely. He he started, I think, in in Wisconsin in the late sixties, maybe sixty nine or seventy, and then and then I came along in the seventies, um, as did my sister. But yeah, we they used to put us in commercials at TV thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> I TV I saw you then. at some time I saw you then because Lacrosse all the bluffs <laughs> there in western part of yes. Wisconsin the driftless area where the glacier didn't come through they got these cool little mini bluffs I live by Granddad's Bluff right there oh I love Granddad's yeah but we had cable because you couldn't get any TV so we had cable oh, TV of so we got Minnesota we're talking seventy seventy one you know it was just connected <laughs> with a big tower on one of these bluffs so that's amazing because definitely I would have saw you and. Well, you know what's cool, idea. Tom, is I actually, yeah. the rest of the band lives in the Quad Cities of Iowa, but I live in Decorah, which is in the Driftless area. Yeah. So we are just one hour from La Crosse. La Crosse is like uh, one of my stomping grounds right now. So, yeah, I, I know Granddad's Bluff well. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good place to go. The Riverside Bluff, there's that little tavern as you go up the bluff. Yes. I live yes. right there. I lived on the railroad tracks right there as a kid. Yeah. For That's five amazing, years. Tom. I told you we in private when you get. I always talk before the show. We'll just go and see what happens. Oh my God. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I love it. Oh, I'll tell you what. Let's jam a tune. The Devil May Care. Let's do the it. Title track Avery Grove's Band. Thanks. We'll be right back with Jenny. Thank you. <laughs> 